everyone, I'm Callie from Unfiltered Gamer. Today I'm sharing with you the Funkoverse strategy games. So these are games for two to four players, take about 20 to 60 minutes to play for ages 10 and up from the creators of the Funko Pop figurines. So with the Funkoverse strategy games, we're going to be diving into the universes of some familiar worlds you may know with characters from places from universes like Harry Potter, Rick and Morty, Golden Girls, and DC Universe. So let's check out the Harry Potter universe with Funkoverse strategy games. Welcome to the wizarding world of Harry Potter in the Funkoverse strategy game. As you can see, we have the four player edition, which comes with Harry, Hermione, Bellatrix Lestrange, and Voldemort, of course, our evil villain. So we have two villains and two heroes. Uh, you'll also get some character cards with them that will have their special unique abilities, each kind of matched to the character. We also have some other characters you can play, some fun little uh, items that actually attach to the characters and can be switched between characters. On the board here, which is double-sided, you'll be using to play four different scenarios. These are double-sided as well. So you can play some area control, some capture the flag, and some different uh, types of two versus two gameplay. Some dice and tokens here to help you uh, utilize the different abilities. And what's unique too is here on the cooldown tracker, as you use abilities based on your character's actions, you'll be placing them on the cooldown tracker. And at the end of each turn, moving them down until you finally get these abilities or item abilities back into play. In addition, there's some of these fun, uh, these tokens, which you'll be using to score points or different ways you'll also be fighting to score points. And that's a little bit about all of the different pieces in the game and what you get with the Funkover strategy game. Depending on the scenario you're playing, you're going to be trying to complete different objectives in a head-to-head -head battle. So, how do you do that? Well, each character is going to have two actions. The starting player will choose one of their characters, or if they're on the team, choose their character, and perform two actions. You can move, you can do a basic challenge, which is a basic attack, you can interact with the board, and you can also do things like assist other characters. You can also use your special abilities or your special items. So when you're moving around the board, you're going to be moving non-diagonally across the board. When you're attacking, you're going to be rolling die, trying to get those attack symbols as well as the exc exclamation points, which are going to be the bonus three attacks, or it could act as three shields if you're rolling to defend. You want the shields as well as the exclamation points as well. And whoever has the most attack or defense will win. And if the if the defender loses, they're going to be knock, knocked down. If they lose an attack again, they are going to be exhausted and put onto the cooldown track. But while a character is knocked down, the other player can on their team can help assist and get them back into the game or the player can use their turn, both of their actions, to get back up and get back into the game. So after player's taken their two actions, turn switches to the other team, player takes two actions, and the play goes back and forth until every character has taken a turn. At the end of the round, we'll move the cooldown, all the abilities on the cooldown tracker down to signify the round has ended and if things go on off of the tracker they'll come back into play at the end of the round you'll remove the exhausted tokens from the characters and pass the first player token to the other team which the round will start all over again until depending on what scenario you chose you've reached the winning one team has reached the winning conditions listed on the scenario that's how you play all right, guys, so let's go ahead and talk about our review of the game. Thank you, Pally, for explaining the game. Funkoverse, enter the Hogwarts battling Funkoverse. Isn't that what it's called? No? No. No. no I don't know. Battling. It's called Funkoverse Strategy Game <laughs> Harry Potter by Funko Games. Uh, let's talk about, before we talk about your review of the game and maybe my thoughts on it, let's talk about the Funko Pops 
comparatively to the Funkoverse miniatures. They are actually different in a lot of ways. So the Funkoverse uh, guys, they, they have they have little little hands that hold uh, weapons that you can use in the game. So in these Funko Pop characters, they don't. These they don't are the have Funko that. Pop figurines, which are you know the trademark ones that a lot of people collect. Huge audience for them. I got a lot so of them. many different characters and IPs. And then these are the char the figurines from the Funko Verse game. So bonus if you can figure out who this is. <laughs> you see, they're a little bit smaller. They have the hands that come out and can hold the items. Um, they also, I think, I feel like some of more of them have some mouths and some different character things, a little bit skinnier and all that. But very similar in material and quality. So the Funkoverse actually has a, a plethora of different games. You're going to have the Golden Girls. Yes. Right? So they're going to have IPs the with Rick and characters. Morty. You mm -hmm. have Harry Potter, and we have some of the Marvel stuff, and I believe, DC. in DC or DC. DC? It's DC. Okay. <laughs> so there's there's uh, some four player sets, and there's some two two four character sets. And there's some two character sets and um, you can kind of mix and match them but even the two character sets are come with all the full game and you can play a full game with them cool yeah uh, I got a chance to check this game out and we actually had Callie interview with uh, Chris yeah Chris from Funko verse uh, from Funko games uh, you can check out that interview in the link in the description below. Where you can learn more about the game, if, yes. in case she didn't give you and enough information. And how he came up with the cooldown tracker. It's a really, really, really cool, cool. story. <laughs> so let's talk about our, our thoughts on the game. So first of all, uh, there are a multitude of games, and they can actually be interchangeable. You can actually go ahead and switch the characters around and switch their items around and play the different types of scenarios. There's four scenarios in each box and a board with a double-sided double-sided layout yes. so yes. for instance the harry potter one's gonna have the school and the library and then mm -hmm. you've got blitz and chits with rick and morty and their house i believe as well and so you can mix with characters and all that good stuff which is super fun the game is a tactical miniatures game which will be having action management along with cooldown timers yes. with that cool cooldown tracker this guy here and that is actually going to determine based on the difficulty of or the strength of the ability yes. how long until the ability goes off and allows you to utilize it again it's a good balancing mechanic for oh this ability is a little bit better than this one i'd say overall it's even though it's a strategy tactic style game it's a good introduction this is definitely a gateway yes. strategy game this is a tactics gateway game which there isn't a lot of which is mm -hmm. kind of cool mm -hmm. and this one's definitely going to start bringing a lot of people in to i think more modern gaming just because of the amazing amount of ips they yes, have the amazing community that funko already has the ability to interchange the characters and play mm -hmm. with different mm -hmm. things and whatnot now they probably wouldn't allow you wouldn't say that specifically yes. but you can do that which is super Cool. Even how they structured the rules with sort of a tutorial component in the beginning where you can learn about how the different abilities and movements work uh, really lends itself to being a game that a gateway game that brings more of the community into board games. Would um, you want to buy this game and the Rick and Morty one? Wait, Harry Potter? And yes. Yes. Yeah. What do you mean? Would you want to buy both of them? Oh, yeah. Is yes, it enough to yes, collect just think, one, or would you want more? I think there's enough. I think once someone buys one, they're going to be like, oh, well, I want the other characters. Because each of the characters have special abilities, and there's some interesting things that can happen um, when you have, you know, because you have two characters on a team, so they're kind of using some of the abilities that can help each other out. And so there's some interesting, interesting interactions there, as well as the items are different. There's a different item with each, with each set. So you can use that as well. So there's a lot of replayability. Even things like these little crystals yeah, here those are, are different colors, right? <laughs> uh -huh. So they have different colors and all that stuff, which is cool. Even the little chits, they are all color coded for the and specific game. And the boards game. are different. So you, they have the different worlds and environment. You can so bring certain lot, characters yeah. to other specific boards, which is really cool. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. it is a collectible game for sure. And collecting, of course, the figures, just like you would normally want to collect the Funko Pop figurines. Yeah. Collecting the Funko, Funko Pop fi uh, figures uh, are going Probably. to be, the yeah. Funko Verse <laughs> figures are going to be uh, a thing to collect as well. I personally really enjoyed this game. Now, of course, this is a gateway game and something I probably wouldn't play 
unless it was specifically with gamers that are just getting into the mm -hmm. hobby. I wouldn't be like, this is the tactical game of the century. <laughs> yeah. However, it is fun, and the characters do feel like you're playing specific characters. There is theme in the game. The boards are differentiated based on the locations and whatnot, yes. which is a lot of fun it's as well. It's very thematic. The abilities are very thematic as well. And what I was saying about the rules is that how you are introduced to just how to move and how to do the challenge and fighting it's very great introductory and it's a great way to introduce introduce you know new players or younger family members into how to play these specific you know tactic style games into how to learn about multi-step problem solving communication with your teammate and planning ahead with your abilities because of the cooldown tracker too this is the that best part of the game yes. in my opinion the cooldown <laughs> tracker makes the game very unique there's not a lot of games or any games i know of that does this in fact when i was designing a game a long time ago i had a problem with cooldowns and yes. this would have been the solution to that problem it is elegant and it is really nice at the end of the round moving the things down and feeling like, oh, I'm charging up my lasers. I so have a feeling we'll see this mechanic used more. in some other games we definitely as well. Will. So great job, Chris. <laughs> yeah, so it's a wonderful series. I'm going to see a lot more of it, I'm sure. I'm excited to be picking up some more copies. Now, will I be playing yeah. them a whole lot? Probably not as much because of my game group, but... I probably be getting more of them just because I like collecting yeah. the figures and it'll be fun to try the different figures in the different universes. I could see really playing this with my coworkers who don't play a lot of games oh, but yeah. are really interested in these different, you know, universes and worlds and all these characters. Yeah. Rick, 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 let's go ahead and play let's go ahead and play uh, <laughs> Fungalverse. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm I'm certain <laughs> That, that that's going to be a thing so I'm, I'm excited to see what they do this game is probably yes. going to blow up just because it has the inner workings of a game attached mm -hmm. with really brilliant ips it is elegant it is fun and, and they have has really so cool many themes. possibilities of where they could go because they are deadpool have <laughs> deadpool a, they already have so Mega Man. Uh, a lot of great ips and you know people that they've huh? worked the different ips that they've already worked with in the funko pops so the Funko, over yeah, that's another one you really want, right? Mega Man. Mega Man. I'd buy that right there. It'd be an insta buy. You gotta Give watch the Funko. interview because Michael jumps in and interrupts to say that he, he Mega wants Man. Those yeah, that'd be really cool. So overall, your feelings are overall great introductory game. Get more people into the hobby. This is what a great way to do that and capitalize on their interest in these characters and show them a really good game with those characters. Yeah, positives for me would be solid game, solid theme definitely oh, really has quality too definitely has quality good quality component. yes and it is vibrant it works very well negatives would be it's a gateway game so you're not going to be playing with big strategic like people who want to play some serious tactics final fantasy tactics people probably going to want to yeah. try something a little stronger than yeah. this and um it's short too it's it's pretty short it's a quick game yeah. yes which it could go either it's way good. it could be good yeah but all right thanks <laughs> for letting me jump in and dante yeah, say hi dante, dante doing a review with you uh, yeah this uh, game is not dog friendly don't let your dog try to eat the pieces <laughs> no what are you thinking no. all right fine i'm out of here <laughs> thank you guys and look forward to seeing you guys next time